All right, everybody, welcome, man. It's a winner's lounge right here on the DNVR Rapids post game show presented by Evoca TV. I'm back. It's your boy, the host, Mitchell Carroll, aka Merchel. I'm back. I'm back with my boy, Yaya. What's up? What's up? Yaya? Bam, 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 bam. Let's go. Huge, huge, huge 2 0 win for the Rapids at home over visiting LAFC just 48 hours after the cup game in Minnesota this week. First goal from Giassi's artist from the penalty spot. Another goal from the penalty spot shortly thereafter for Diego Rubio. Yarbrough holds serve with a shutout. Rapids get their 22nd consecutive game at home without a loss yeah yeah what's your biggest takeaway dude i think the rapids dominated this game from beginning to start they really I'm did i'm not even playing like i am super hyped about this today it's pretty crazy i mean we we've been saying for a lot of games that like oh they played so well but they didn't get the points like they you know like specifically the dallas game i think was like that minnesota was close to that but you can't say that they dominated start to finish in those games because they, you know, they didn't get the results. This game was truly a a start to finish domination, um, in in all levels. You good? Sorry, man, my audio went crazy there for a minute. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, it's gone. Okay, he's back. Good, we're, we're back good, we're good. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, seriously, I think I think the the attack was strong. Lots of chances. Lewis was running all over the place. Uh, the back line was strong. Wilson back starting in the in the center of the back line. Um, and I thought Mac really, really helped, and and Acosta too, really, really controlled the pace. Um, we saw Price again coming on late which was good to see the captain back. So everybody's back. Uh, the band's back together, and they got a huge win. Yeah, honestly, man, again, every time I bag on Lewis, he comes back and proves me wrong. Um, I still think there's a Jonathan Lewis problem unless he keeps playing this way, right. which he hasn't proven that he has consistently. But every time Lewis plays out of his mind and we get productive wing play from him, the Rapids win. The Rapids dominate the game. We're happy with the Timbers. Happened when uh, Atlanta United, and it's happened. And it happened today with LAFC. So it's becoming a thing of Lewis is becoming one of our more important players, and he has to come out and show out. Uh, yeah, surprisingly, honestly, I, you know, it was uh, there. He is Wanders with the Ruby. Oh my guy, Wanders, he must be hyped, man. <laughs> he, He's right he, did, he did miss that penalty. Just gonna put that out there. He missed the penalty, got it, it back uh, yeah. on the VAR. Um, but, man, Lewis, look, he didn't finish the chances he had, but he was so productive, I thought. Honestly, he was probably maybe not the best player, but I do think I think he he had a great game. I um, thought he would finish it out. was surprised to see him come off. Um, but a ton of good chances, just really a domination. Um, who, who, who would you say stood out for you the most besides Lewis? If I have to look at the whole thing, man, it had to be Rubio, right? Yeah. He was trading chances. He was perfect in that attacking midfield role, like where he can play the false nine and like runs all the way up. I think Sardis and Rubio are like the perfect pair. There's not a. I tweeted it out. It was the stupidest tweet. It was uh, Sardis and Rubio over Car- uh, Bella and Arango. I think that's. That. I mean, I don't believe that if I'm going to be honest. Scoreboard. Honest. But obviously, I, or she doesn't like right? two goals to zero for that. Deal. Yeah, but I yeah. think Rubio, man, Rubio created so many chances. I think Rubio finished what he could, he was everywhere. He also had a lot of those little, like, nice crosses that just didn't reach Sardis or didn't reach whoever was in the middle. So I, I thought Rubio was really, really impressive. He really was, and it was a complete opposite from the season opener in LA. Of course, LAFC won 3 0, Vela had a hat trick, and you're like, man. LAFC is the real deal. I mean, they, they're still top of the table now, so, you know, whatever, but are coming into today. But Vela, you're like, oh, man, golden boot for him. Is he going to go to Spain? Like, is he, you know, like, are we seeing the the, rena- the Vela renaissance? And he's only scored one goal since, and he was completely invisible today. Completely. Yeah. Well, and uh, I don't know if you heard, right before the broadcast started, they were talking about how Vela resigned for the rest yeah. of this year and then next yeah. year probably. Uh, again, that's a really, really good team. That's a great team on the other side. They're on top of the West for a reason. They're finally getting everything together. Um, I'm really surprised the Costa didn't come out stronger. 
I thought Kalen would come out and like try to dominate. Um, I also want to give out a shout out to our Acosta, the new Acosta. Yeah, he, he was great in set pieces today. Um, he really was. I know Jack Price is the best set piece taker, but it's been nice having somebody else being able to take those set pieces, and that you, now you're a little bit more confident that if uh, Price is in there, that you can still generate off those. I, I really do enjoy that. I think he's been. I mean, he has done a very good Jack Price impression. I won't say he's been as good as Jack Price because no one is as good as Jack Price at set pieces. But Brian Acosta has filled in really well these last few weeks. Um, And before that, he really didn't play at all, really. I mean, he was just kind of spot minutes here and there, Um, you know, had more minutes early. I think he started the season opener against L.A., but outside of that, he wasn't playing much. Then Price goes down with the hamstring, and it's Acosta time. And I thought he did a really good job. Um, continued it today. And I can kind of see why he hasn't gotten as many minutes as we thought he would right away. Um, his conditioning is not all the way right there. If you get towards the end of the game, he loses so much gas. Yeah. Um, instead of having a Mac come out when he got that injury, he stayed in, and they took Acosta out for Price, which I thought it was like, yeah, he's a little gassed. He needs that break at the end. So I can definitely see why they haven't given Acosta the minutes I think he deserves for the most part. Yeah, yeah. And look, Price is back. I mean, I bet you he starts next week. Um, he, there was a run of play, and I tweeted it out on the Rapids account, but there was a run of play about three or four minutes after he came on where he won a header. Um, LAFC ended up getting the ball off of that, and he chased it down to the defensive box and slid behind and won a ball and, and took it back and, and made a pass out of that. And I mean, if that's that, I mean, you got to use your hamstrings a lot on that play and you know, he looked fully healthy and ready to go. Oh man. I, I, we were talking about this. We were texting back and forth watching the game. Um, this team is just not as good as it, as it should be because of the injury. Uh-huh. We saw a mostly healthy team go out there and dominate the best team in the league. Think about that. Like, the, one of the most talented best teams in the league, they went out there and dominated. Eight of the players that started for the Rapids today featured in that cup match. Exactly. Right? And, 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 still, and like, all but were, one person on the bench. Like, it was – everyone was tired. They were playing 48 hours ago. Well, not now. 40, whatever, 51 hours, whatever it is now. But the while time. they were playing, it was only 48 hours since they were playing a competitive match in Minnesota. Um and they dominated. This is by far the best showing we've seen from the Rapids since that opening two home games against Atlanta and against Kansas City. By and far again, none. I, I like Rubio and Sardis together have become such a good pairing. We've seen them only two games fully, but you can tell the difference in the attacking third with both of them on there instead of just either Rubio or Sardis. It's just. It gets you so hyped, man. The Yaya Selena is back. <laughs> Yaya um, Selena is full, I, baby. I was trying to be really positive last week and say, oh, yeah. Uh, I, this uh, week with uh, Joseph, we, we were all together. I was telling Joseph, I'm trying to be positive. I thought it was a 1-0 victory. But a 2-0 victory, that could have been 5-0 easily. If it wasn't oh, yeah. for those chances I hit the post and a couple like bad bounces, this could have been 5-0. I mean, if not for McCarthy having the game... I mean, I mean, he gave up those two penalties, but I mean, this might be one of the better games he's ha- ever had. He was playing out of his mind. The Rapids were putting balls on goal consistently. Like, like five zero is like most other goalkeepers they're going up against. It's five zero. Honestly, what if it would have been five zero against Portland too? They do have to finish those chances. It Absolutely. doesn't matter who's there, but it's just so refreshing. To look at that team and you're like, wow, this is what this team fully healthy can be if they play right. And it's just and they, they were still missing Jack Price. So yeah. I don't know, I don't know how you can look at this team and not be encouraged that they can go on a run and push for a home playoff game this year. I mean, definitely the panic meter, we're back, we're closer to green now, I would say, right? I don't know if you have it. You'll probably pull it up here in a sec, but it's it's really tough to be worried, especially with the stretch of schedule coming up. Yeah, I don't I mean, I think I might be like right there on the border of yellow and green, because I still you know, they still got a ways to go up the table. But this stretch they have coming up, this LAFC game was a big worry. And I know you talked about it with Joseph, and we talked about it with Joseph and Jared after the San Jose loss. Um, 
this was a big one. And this was like, oh man, how are they going to deal with this and then continue this stretch of games? But um, they have, they're at Sporting Kansas City this week. Then they are home for Seattle, who is floundering in the MLS. And then Nashville, who's right around the same spot at the table as Colorado is. I mean, this is about as easy of a stretch as it gets. And I think it's harder. I think it's harder than we give it. If we just look at the like uh, standings and what the teams have been, I think it's like, oh, it's an easy, it's an easy like stretch. But if you actually look at the talent the teams have, it's a little bit scarier because you do have Seattle, who is like a, a powerhouse. SKC still has a lot of talented players, but the Rapids just took down the hardest opponents on this stretch. They were so far they're one and two in this five and 15 days, right? Yep. So they're one and two. I mean, yeah, one and two. They need to come out. They need to come out with a, they need to come out with five points, four points minimum in this five game stretch. Yeah. And, and I mean, look, happy. it's a look short turnaround. It's a short turnaround. Wednesday night, they are in Kansas city. So, you know, and every, I mean, I was surprised at how long people were playing. I was surprised at how many people that started on Wednesday slash Thursday were playing. Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be an interesting game, especially to just turn around on Saturday and play the Sounders at home. Like they're going to be gassed and you're right. I think at minimum, you're looking for a point against Kansas city. They've been terrible and you dominated them last time. So I think, I think if they go in with this same game plan, if they play even as close to similar style as they played today, KC cannot run with them. That back line is old and slow and cannot keep up with the Rubio Zardis Lewis attack. They just can't, there's no, they, they just cannot. I just don't know how you look at this game and you're not encouraged. Take away the penalties, whether they were penalties or not, we'll just talk about it in a bit, but take a look at how they played the whole game. How Juan says they had a great defense. Oh, LAFC right. yeah. only had two shots on target, just two. You know how insane that is. That's one of the premier attacking teams, and they only they've only lost one game all year, and it was against the LA Galaxy. Yeah, now too against <laughs> LA Galaxy, who had who was a, what it was a very controversial result because of the goals that were nullified. So. You look at it, and the Rapids came away with a victory against the top team in the MLS, an attacking force, and they clean-sheeted them. They blinked them. They gave them a big old donut, and they said, you ain't getting nothing in my fortress. It's I my mean, dick. You're not getting near my dick. That's yeah. what they <laughs> say. Protect the dick, baby. Um, you could say that LAFC got dicked. Let's go. Eric wanted me to get that one in there, so we're trying get to work dick. that. Get dicked. Get dicked, LAFC, for real. Dude, you can't just come in here. Logan says this could have easily been 4 0. Quality of chances were so good. We look strong against a strong team. Give me all the Yasalina. The y- Yasalina is flowing in Rapids country, baby. You love to see it. People got to be hyped. I mean, I don't know how you can't be hyped about this. Um, this is the game that's like, okay, all the pieces are in place. Price is back. Wilson is back to being the vocal leader of that back line. Rubio back from suspension up top. Lewis making runs like he's supposed to. Lucas starting again, which for a while there he was coming on as a sub. Beta Shore was starting for him. Uh, the pieces were in place, and it, God, man, it looked, it just looked so good. It looked so good. Their passing was really crisp, which was an issue I had against um, two, three weeks ago that their passing was like everywhere. They weren't focused. Oh, against San Jose. That's when last yeah. week, not two weeks ago. Yeah. That's when I felt really like, what the hell's going on? They're not I think gonna- I. I have a theory about that, and I think it, however Mac is passing, and not just passing, but like what does his first touch look like when the ball gets to him, that is kind of how the whole game seems to go for the Rapids. And today, he was on point and crisp. And sometimes when it's sloppy, like against San Jose, the whole team looks sloppy. And I don't know why, but he seems to be the the totem for how, how the team looks in attack. Does and that I make sense? Also- yeah, I completely understand that because he is the one that t- takes the midfield. But yeah. if he's not Chris, because the ball usually goes through him. Yeah. Everything else is gonna be a little bit off balance. I also love that Mac won the um, the battle of the axes. It was a cost mm-hmm. against the Rapids and a uh, Mac against LAFC. I love that Mac came out and he was like, yeah. My ex is worse, but I'm better off now. 
<laughs> that, was, that was very refreshing to see for the Raptors to come out on, on top of that. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah, man. It was uh, it was great to see. You know who had the best redemption story of the day, though? Do you, do you know, know who it was? I know who it is, but I want you to say it. Ted Uncle, baby. The most hated referee in the world after that SLC match earlier this season. Uh, came through with two huge penalty calls in the first half. And then after Rubio was illegally saved, as Warners put it, uh, went to VAR and gave Rubio another chance at a penalty, gave the Rapids the 2-0 lead early. Not, I mean, I think they would have won either way, but, I mean, Ted Uncle, man, you love to see it. You love to see it. Ted Uncle coming through, never said a bad word about you ever. Don't look that up. Uh, he's my favorite ref ever. So No, look it up. up. Look it up, Ted. I want to keep, <laughs> keep the pressure on you, man. Keep the pressure on you. You've redeemed yourself for one game. There's history here. There's not just one game you need to redeem yourself. I think my quote after the last 10 Uncle game was, does Ted have like an X or something? And it was a terrible breakup, and that X is from Denver or something. He just hates Colorado now. But Apparently I don't know. he has an X in LAFC. That's even worse. <laughs> like, like, there's, another, there's an X in Los Angeles. I heard him even worse. I think whoever his ex was cheating on him with is lives in LA. And uh, he really wanted to just give give the Rapids the win. There. He didn't know who to, he, he didn't know who, he wanted. He didn't know, uh, who to dig today. You know, the Rapids or LAFC. And he's like, let's just get. LAFC. Oh, my God. That is so funny. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Wednesday night, short turnaround. Um, do you think... <laughs> real quick, real quick, real quick. Yeah. While we're on the topic of penalties, do you think yeah. there were penalties? Yeah. Do you I think, think there were both fine. penalties? I think, yeah, the I, think one, I think the first one, there's like... I mean, Rubio getting kicked box. in the face, in the box, uh, while we're trying to head it, is for sure a penalty. Oh, I second get that. One, second one, yeah, I mean, I'd, I, it's not not a penalty. Well, like, the first one, like, I understand if you don't call it a penalty, because that, that's a play that happens all the time, and sometimes it doesn't get called. Sure. I thought it was a penalty. I was more surprised he called it a penalty than anything. Right, right, right. right. Um, but the second one, I thought I didn't think that was a penalty at all. But I'll take a ten out of ten. I thought that was a a nice body to body hit allowed. He went in with the shoulder, didn't extend the arm. The ball was uh, uh, he took the ball away. But I could also see the penalty call, and I'll take. I that mean, one. right? You call a penalty if you're denying a score, a goal, a goal scoring opportunity. If he doesn't send him to the ground there, that's a, a pretty good chance he's going to put one in the back of the net. So I did, yeah, and I, I, I didn't think he did because I thought the ball was already drifting away from him before before he even got hit. I thought that was too long of a touch. But also, I want to talk about Zardes' this touch. He had a touch in the final third that if he just slammed it as soon as he touched it. With that great pass from Lewis, yep, that, yep. that would have was Ru. I don't know if it was Lewis or Rubio. I can't remember, but it should have been a goal right there, right then. The should have goals too, man. I mean, you could. There's probably four or five of them, but to me, the biggest one was Price's first set piece uh, into Zardes there, where he had the diving header off the far post, bounces out, trusty into cleanup, running in and yeah, kind there. of <laughs> yeah. Might have hurt himself running into the post and doesn't put the ball in. Both of them were just like, come on. Uh, Lewis obviously had a good chance that went right to the keeper that he, you know, kind of had at his feet for a little bit in the box. Finally got free. Couldn't put it in the back. But overall, I mean, those are just, that's just picking nits, man. We're not here to pick nits. We're here to give flowers and, and the Rapids deserve all the flowers today. I mean, that was an, it was an amazing game. Yeah. Again, I think even with all those two penalties, they win today. Yeah. They they eke out a result, either a tie or a win, because I can count in my fingers the time I was uh, the, the amount of times I was scared that LAFC was going to score, and it goes like this. Yep, that's as uh, the amount of times I was scared that LAFC could come back. Two. Yep. I mean, and even then, I mean, Yarbrough had a nice, easy kick clear on one. There was a there was a, a corner that I thought was a great corner, and then LAFC just no one tried to touch it, and it went through and, and gone, and that was kind of the only one I was really nervous about. Um, you have to take a lot of confidence out of this, and I'll be really curious to look at the, the post-game stuff, um, which, you know, I'm not there today, still still getting back from COVID, but um, I'm sure that, that – Fraser's happy. I'm, I'm, I mean, that that goes without saying. But um, I really wonder if he's going to give away anything about about you know is Price going to start? Is that kind of why maybe he came off the bench? 
today so he can start in Kansas City. Um, you know, like, is Wilson ready to start two games in a row? Uh, you know, there's definitely some questions there um, about who's going to play where. Um, I don't know if any of the guys who don't usually get run, you know, can play. Like, uh, Markanic was fine, but I wouldn't want him to play in a MLS game yeah. right now, right? Like, yeah. Mesquita, mm, probably not. Like, I'll not unless Mesquita. he has I to. Think, I think he'd be okay. Sure. Right. And I mean, you're lucky that it's SLC on a short week, you know, and not Austin or somebody like that. Um, or, you know, one of the Texas teams, but you know, I mean, what are your, where's your head at with that? Actually, before, before we get too much into predictions and stuff, let me uh, talk about the homies over at Ivaca TV, dude. Uh, today obviously was not on regular TV. It was streaming, but if you missed last week's game against San Jose, or you had to watch it on some sketchy streaming site, you don't have to do that anymore. You don't have to do that at all. You don't have to miss all your favorite Colorado teams because you can get Ivaca TV. It's a totally new approach to TV programming delivery that is less expensive, easy to watch, and offers a superior picture. It includes local networks like Altitude Sports, baby. That's how you watch the Rapids. AT&T Sportsnet, if you're trying to catch the boys this summer down at Coors Field. Uh, Ivaca TV is growing constantly, adding uh, new and national channels to their lineup all the time. You won't miss anything if you're a sports fan. Service is now available in Denver and Colorado Springs. Um, and how do you sign up? You go to evaca.tv slash DNVR. Use promo code DNVR. You will get $10 off your first three months. That's only $15 per month for the first three months plus receiver. No contracts or hidden fees. Go get Evaca TV right now if you're not able to watch the Rapids on TV. Um, okay, looking ahead. So we have SKC who dominated at home. Um, actually, this is a good point from Logan. Let's talk about this for a sec. Rivalry between the two teams is starting to mount. Costa and K trades, the thrashing we gave them on decision day last year, then hitting them, then them hitting us 3 0 opening day to 2 0 here. You're right. I mean, this is the only thing holding back from being a great rivalry is it seems to be they're never quite at the same level yeah you know what i mean there is always some sort of gap except for last year to end the season right um it would be nice to to feel that way i mean yes it feels great after the win it's easy to say oh yeah it's a rival we just kicked their ass but you know i would like to see that and it sucks that we don't play them again right i mean this season goes until october yeah and and to not be able to see them again, especially now they're out of the Open Cup. Um, actually, are they out of the Open? I don't know if they're out of the Open Cup or not. I, I have really no know. idea. Yeah. <laughs> but it's uh, it sucks that you can't measure yourself up against them again, right? You've already played two against them. Um, and, you know, while it's nice to know that a, a team that good isn't on the schedule the rest of the way, right? But those late season need the points for positioning. Rival- that adds to the rivalry, I think. Yeah, right? just little by little. I think – it's on the path and it can get there. All it needs is a little extra, like, hey, so a little extra playoff juice. Yeah, a little, um, little, little sauce. And yeah. the Rapids keep being, um, being uh, players in the playoffs year after year. LAFC is almost guaranteed that every time with, with mm-hmm. the talent they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can see Vela's really frustrated whenever they come to Dick. He gets extremely oh, yeah. frustrated. Uh, you can see there's that extra chippiness. There was that uh, Rongo hit to Lala's and Lala's like completely, <laughs> completely flopped. And then you see a Rongo screaming at him, and then Lala's gets up and screams at him. You can see it gets chippy every time they play. You can tell there's <laughs> that little extra. You know what I mean? So like, and then how Logan said with those trades, there's yeah. a little bit of history with them now. Oh there's yeah, there's a little like, oh yeah, I took your best midfielder. No, 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 I took your best midfielder. And now there's that little argument: who took, who's going to be the better midfielder? So yeah, the two Colorado. national guys, both like a uh, featuring for the U uh, US and the Canada team. It's just it brings that rivalry out a little. I won't say it's a full on rivalry, but there's some building blocks that you can definitely grow from there. Yeah, totally. And look, Colorado and LA have rivalries in in a lot of sports, right? Like a lot of sports, right? Obviously, Nuggets Lakers has turned into a good one recently. And was back in the mellow days in the playoffs when they would meet a lot. Um, LA Chargers. Yeah, Chargers are in the division. Um, 
Rocky Dodgers, fans hate Rocky. the Dodgers. Yeah, I don't know if the Dodgers consider that a rivalry, but uh, you know what I mean? Like it's a USC and CU basketball is definitely a big rivalry. Um, so I think, yeah, I think, I think the groundwork is there for this to be a really good rivalry. I don't think it's ever going to be quite on the level with a, you know, Salt Lake, yeah. Kiss City. All the yeah. way around. Like, right. I think it'll be a chip. I think it's kind of, um, it'll turn something into like, oh, when you see the founders, you just want to beat them. Right. And if yeah. you beat them enough times, they'll be like, hey, fuck these guys. They keep beating. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think, I think it's that little like extra push, like playing yeah. with the galaxy. It just, for sure. It'll become games that, pe- that all players will get up for. And I think that's going to be really fun. Also, yeah. shout out like the stadium. Look dope. Yeah. A lot of fan out. Definitely. It looks really, really fun. Shout everybody out that went out there. I oh, know a few of DNVR peeps were out that's there. Right. Eric, Andre, and uh, Adam were out there having fun. So it's a great yeah. environment. I love seeing everybody out there. I we'll could post the pictures with the having, mascot. We'll post their pictures with the mascot for sure. I could definitely tell people are having a lot of fun out there. Yeah, man. Definitely a good showing. Definitely a great day for people to get out to the to the park. Um but uh, speaking of rivalries, what do you – give me your quick prediction for uh, the Wednesday game. Um, it's at Kansas, right? At Kansas City. I think the must are at a draw, 1-1. One, 1-1, one. One, one. okay. I think, I'm usually pretty optimistic. I think that's optimistic on short yeah. rest after coming okay. off this high. Wouldn't be surprised sure. if they come out the victory either. Sure. Uh, but I think it'll be a 1-1 one, one affair with a okay. lot of defensive play from the Raptors. Who scores? I think it's going to be Rubio. I think Rubio continues to streak. I just think Rubio right now is really good. Sure. He's feeling himself. You can tell every time he scores, he looks around and he's like, who's talking shit now, man? Like, like <laughs> you can tell that he's heard all the, all the commotion and you can tell that he's ready for the smoke. How about you? you? I think it's two on Rapids, man. I think they kind of have Kansas City's number. Their, their style just the, – Kansas City just to, can't defend this team. Seems too fast. Their formation is just not the. It's just such a clash of of styles, and I think the Rapids have the advantage there. Um, I think they're clicking on all cylinders. I think all the big pieces are back in place, and I think Lewis finally converts one of these goals finally. And I think Rubio, like you said, gets another two one win uh, in Kansas City on Wednesday. That's my prediction. Yeah, yeah. You got anything else you want to touch on before we uh, get out of here? Um. I kind of want to talk a little bit about uh William Yarbrough. I think he deserves some flowers. Oh, yeah. To, like, just say how good he was because he was amazing today. Yeah, and you know what? He wasn't tested too much. And shout out that defense the Wanderers was commenting about, you know, here a little earlier. Uh, but I think, you know, I it's not all, you know, we say Wilson's back, so the communicator's back. But, I mean, obviously so much of that is also from Yarbrough. And to be on a 22-match unbeaten streak at home, is is unreal and you can't do that without great goalkeeping you just can't period end of story yarby is the real deal should have been keeper of the year last year hopefully hopefully uh the the record improves and the points total builds up for the Raptors to put him in position for that this year do you know if that's like a broken record oh yeah like they broke the record right that was the the big thing today that with this today not with today not losing. Oh, they're in the fifth, tied for fifth longest streak ever. Okay, that's, that's yeah. I didn't know what it was. I'm sure. But, you know, I think the next one is now they're third, I think, because I think the, the tie for fifth, maybe they're in the fourth. I don't know how many players have to find the streak, but I, I don't see it ending anytime soon, not with Nashville and Seattle coming up. Sorry. That's going to, you know, add two more to that. That was the hardest. This was their hardest um, test for sure. And if you look at the standings right now, the Rapids are in six. There you go. Games played. Nashua needs to play. There's still a few teams, quite a bit teams that are like behind on games played. But if you look at it, the Rapids are looking mighty nice now. They're not that Older behind. Friendship looks better. They're only three points behind FC Dallas for a home game. It's possible. There's a long season to go. They have the players in place. Positive goal differential. Exactly. There's just so many things looking up for the Rapids. Mm-hmm. I am positive. I've been positive for the most part this year. Positive Yasolina, dude. I didn't think they were going to win the West this year, but I can definitely see them pushing for a home playoff game. And well, I mean, Utah off. is one, one point ahead of them. 
currently. And they have a negative, they have a negative five goal differential, right? Like yeah. the Rapids keep playing like they're playing. They will work their way up these Western Conference standings. I think it's very obtainable right now. Um, and after a win like this, like who really scares you in the West? Yeah, and if we were to having this conversation uh because of the Broncos and the company talking about when they release the record, would you rather have really easy schedule to begin with, then get harder as you go, but you can start off really good, then get the rhythm, or would you rather start off in a really hard schedule? start off bad, and then get rhythm as the year goes on. I think you find out who you really are when you play the best teams. Yeah, exactly. So, like, my thing was always you want – I'd rather you guys start off bad and finish good than start off good and finish bad. So, and I mean, they did start – if you're looking at the start, start was terrible, right? Exactly. Like, that, that game in L.A. was terrible. But then, really good streak to, to you know, to come back. And, and those two wins at home – tailed off again for a while, but then, you know, they beat Portland, lost to San Jose, come back and beat LA. I think, I think it's trending in the right direction. Yeah. And it's all, it's always really positive when you look at the team and you can tell they're playing good. It wasn't fluky and you could tell they've been on a roll as of late. Don't look now, but they've won two of their last three games in the MLS. Let's go. Now counting the open cup. Cause Let's it doesn't go. count. Let's go. Like get dicked like, LA. Get we dicked. About, we were talking about like, Oh, they haven't won a game in eight games seven game however long it was because they kept tying or kept losing now yeah. they two of their last three and they're going into a more favorable part of their schedule a little oh, bit yeah um if you look at the standings wise there's still talent on those teams that that scares me a bit of course mm-hmm. any given weekend any given saturday it could always happen i would not be shocked at seven points from these next three games if we Sorry. get Wouldn't if be. the rapids get seven points they are looking mighty fine absolutely um all right, yeah, yeah, I think that's going to do it for us, bud. Um, I'm happy I'm back. We'll be coming this week, multiple shows. Um, we'll hopefully Tuesday or Wednesday, maybe Tuesday we might get together, preview yeah, the we'll, game. We'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk we'll about it. We'll figure something out. We're going we'll, we'll, to we'll bring you some content. We'll figure real. that out. Yeah. We'll figure something. We'll bring you some content for real, real. we got two games this week. Um, get to our YouTube page, like and subscribe, download, five-star reviews, all that on your if you're listening on podcasts. Go to the dnvr.com, get your subscription, get your membership. What are you doing if you haven't? Come on. Uh, go to DNVR Locker, get your swag, put me to work. It's Merchel, man. Come on. Buy some stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, that's Yaya. Follow him. It's, you know, at Yaya G underscore Vasquez right there. There it is. Uh, follow me at Mitch underscore underscore Carol. Um, follow dnvr underscore rapids man just you know give us the love baby we're here for you we're here for you us you match made in heaven uh we'll see you this week up the pits